Hey, this is Dr. Corey Glenn with Blue Sky Bio, and I'm going to be showing in this video the newest uh, update to the DS3D software, and we've added the feature of denture scanning. And so let's go through in the software how to complete this. You're going to open the DS3D software, type in your patient's name, and you're going to see a new icon up here in the upper right. This is the denture scanning uh, workflow and once you click on that you see that there's an option to scan lower or scan upper so I've got an example upper denture here let's go ahead and click scan upper and the software is going to pose some pictures that tell you how to orient this model so what you'll want to use is just the normal uh, plate that has the tacky material in it you don't want any excess sticking up it should just look flat across when you look at this and we're just going to take our denture and we're going to lay it on the side of the teeth so what would be the buccal surface and actually you want to put the tissue surface towards the camera first so we'll just press that in and then set it in the scanner with the dot facing backwards and now we're ready to go ahead and click next so now the scanner is going to begin taking some pictures and uh, I'll time lapse this so that you can see it, but it's just going to take pictures from many different views and then it's going to have us flip it halfway through. Okay, you can see that it has finished the first half of the scanning, and so we can look at this and take a, a good look at all the areas that were able to be scanned. And uh, since this is just going to be a duplicate, I'm not terribly concerned about filling in those tiny little holes. Uh, that should be perfectly sufficient. Okay, so let's click Next now. And the software is going to direct us to go ahead and flip this over. So once again, with the tissue side towards the camera, we're just going to take the denture and this time embed it with the opposite side, the buckle side of the denture. Uh, down on the tack and then the tissue towards the camera and let's go ahead and click next and the software will now image this Now one thing I should mention uh, That's unique to this video. This just happens to be a duplicate denture that I have and it's pretty rough But most dentures are going to be highly polished and they're going to be very reflective And so you probably should expect any time that you're duplicating a denture if it's got any level of polish on it, you're probably going to need to hit that with some type of a scanning powder. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but you're going to have to do something to knock the shine off that so that it will image uh, with the best quality. Okay, with the second half of that scan finished, you can see that now we have this opposing side of the model. I uh, should point out, you do always have the opportunity to go ahead and hit Add View. If there was a very obvious hole, then you could hit, hit Add View by uh, orienting that model towards the camera. So if I wanted to fill in those holes by taking more shots, I could orient it like so and then hit Add View. But again, the little holes that I'm seeing here have no consequence for the uh, duplicate process that I'm trying to do. So this next step, once you click OK, the software is going to automatically align it. So it's going to use the common data in the palette and the uh, lingual of the teeth, all of the areas that were common to both scans, and it's going to stitch those together and then turn this into one model. And so here you see that stitch is now complete, and we have what looks just like a pure denture with no additional uh, parts or pieces on it. And you might be wondering how it avoids getting that build plate. The software does recognize this dot uh, and the plane that this dot is on in the scanner. And so the software is able to cut that out. And so it's just going to cut out the little portion where it attaches to this. And that gets picked up on the opposing scan. So we finished this. If for whatever reason it did not align, you could hit the retry alignment. But I've not had this fail just yet. Uh, so I'm going to click finish. You'll now have to wait for it to finish post-processing. Takes about a minute or so. Okay, with post-processing complete, we're now ready to go to the final step. Now this is optional, but you do have the option to now take that model and crop it. And so with the crop tool, you might have a couple little floating pieces of model that are out here. I'm simply going to use the lasso tool and I'll hold down shift and encircle the area that I want to keep and then hit crop 
and that will get rid of any little bits that are unattached to the model. And with that done, it looks like this is finished, so I'll save that. And finally, we can now export the file. So if you wanted to get your actual duplicate denture STL, we could now go to export to files. And here you see it opens a folder and it has one file in it called upper denture. If I was to open that, And here is the final STL. And so you can see a very accurate representation of that denture. And this can be a really helpful thing to have. You know, patients want to always have a backup denture. So you can actually scan their dentures and then just tuck this STL away if they ever need it because they've lost their denture for some reason. Uh, you'll be able to make them one. You can use this for creating scan appliances, for surgical guides. There's really just a lot of different uh, applications for these de duplicate dentures. I actually use them very extensively in helping to build new dentures uh, when I was making complete dentures. So anyways, this is just a nice new feature on the DS3D scanner and I hope you like it.